absolutely frigid outside. Just bringing in the second heater. So the heater I got that I keep down below. That's not entirely doing anything. It doesn't have the, uh, I took the feet off because I used to hang it to save on room underneath. I wanted to put it in a spot where it needed to be hanged and I put the feet back on. I don't know where they're at. So I just put them on this board. Holy crap. I just got close to this window and I just feel there's a horrible draft coming out of there. Like it's just cold air seeping out from underneath this blind. It almost feel, almost feels like there's air movement. I mean, it's just a. Uh, so those windows obviously leak a little more than I thought they did. Got the transmission pan in. Let's take a look at it. Pan. That's more like it. That is much more like it. I heard these might be kind of short, so we'll find out. Getting in some more projects. Tool collection has been even further organized. Got some extension cords going down below. I might have covered that in the last video. Um, and cleared out this tool tray too, which is awesome to have. So I throw my drill in there. And when I'm taking screws out of stuff, I can store them and bring it all in and just have everything in one hand. Love having that back. That's awesome. So we got that, a quarter inch driver. I'm taking out the water heater, but first, go down below, update you guys on the transmission pan the one I got was just slightly too shallow to go on it was hitting the filter the tube I, I do believe I can get a shorter tube so I'm probably gonna look into that later um, and also a shorter bolt I have seen shallow pan kits with shorter tubes I know they exist I just need to find a get online do some searching find a shorter tube shorter bolt and that can go on or I could even make a spacer out of a sheet of steel if I trace it. Uh, project for later. Either way, I put the old pan back on. It was easier just to clean that up, get the old gasket material off, and uh, just give it a shot. It sucks not having the drain plug. I know there's a rebuild coming in the future. That's, that just makes a huge headache, but whatever. It's nice not having it leaking. At least I think it's not leaking. Let's go check. Double check for sure. So I sprayed it down with some uh, degreaser, parts cleaner, whatever, scrubbed it, got it looking good again. And it fit like a glove, the the one, the first one I got off Amazon was kind of, it was a bit of a tight fit. And the new aluminum one just hit, yeah, right here where the filter hangs down lowest and also where the bolt comes down and holds it in place. So. I'm going to need a shorter bolt and a shorter um, filter tube. We had run it for some hours yesterday. Or maybe an hour. And uh, let it sit overnight and looks like we are good. Looks like I still got some residual. Gosh, I hope that's definitely not motor oil, it's too red. A little bit is probably motor oil. Keep an eye on it. I know the motor still leaks a little bit from up top, I think, somewhere. Some gasket, by the way, from AutoZone. Love it. One year warranty. 
I won't need it. It'd fit like a glove. Um, tighten it to 130 inch pounds and didn't leak once. Really happy with that. It was a perfect fit. It was also nice that it was kept flat so it just sat perfectly on top of the pan as I put it on. No leaks whatsoever. Love it. Uh, also managed to get one more gallon of that high mileage transmission fluid from Castrol. So I'd say that's good for at least another 80 to 100,000 miles. Hopefully by then I'll have enough money to do a full rebuild and, and put that pan back on with a drain plug so it's easy to work on in the future. Another quick little project I got done. Got the ground wire wired up to a separate switch. This is the old one down by the doorstep that's missing its plastic lever because it got kicked or bumped or something. Um, and that's just grounded onto a piece of metal. So now I can start the engine, let it run for 30 minutes, get the ignition battery charged, and then flip it on. Or what I like to do even better, uh, disconnect the ignition battery because I found that even with a, a, with a really dead house battery bank, that could still leave your ignition battery drained if you don't let it fully charge both batteries at the same time. So if I ever connect them and leave them both connected, I think that would be on a very long trip. If I'm doing maybe a two hour, three hour trip coming from uh, Washington to Oregon or out to the East Coast or wherever I may be going. If it's a long trip, I'll flip it on, not worry about disconnecting it, but the short city trips I like to disconnect that. And I can just reach down here and put that on, boom, 